Crowley's Magic, and reading all of his available works. In the 1960s, homosexual youth was rallied to take to the streets. In the early 1960s, homosexual activity was illegal in every state. Subsequent to Crowley's sexual revolution of the 60s, there is legislation now being pushed to silence those who would even speak out against this perversion. Not coincidentally, the founder of the modern homosexual movement, Crowley and Satanist Harry Hay, was dubbed the oldest hippie of the 1960s. Harry Hay, who was also a music teacher, knew how to influence and subvert the youth through music. Hay said that this language, speaking of music, had the power to communicate ideas, plans, and issues through the form of songs, and dances under the noses of the authorities as a weapon. Music always had the power to inspire revolt and revolution. Hay declared, to two-thirds of the world today, music is a language, a method of communicating, organizing, educating, mobilizing. Crowley's most effective tools for transformation, though, were not Timothy Leary, Harry Hay, Kinsey, or Robert Anton Wilson. Best-selling author Albert Goldman declared that popular music of the 1960s was, quote, the most important cultural event in the history of America. Um, it was like an earthquake. It, uh, it just shook the whole country, and it cracked open uh, the shell of what had been society before that, and outswung the whole new generation of free. Music is essentially the manipulation of sound. Um, it, it has the power to arouse, it has the power to frighten. Billy Joel, looking back on the 50s and 60s, admitted that music was used for subversive sexual revolution. It started to make people feel profane. You know, all those things they were saying about rock and roll in the early days, saying, oh, it's going to subvert our youth, it's going to make them all want to have sex, it's going to make them all go crazy. They were right. In 1964, rock's most popular group of all time came singing, I want to hold your hand. And after the world's youth gave their hand to them, they took them on a journey into drugs, permissive sex, Eastern mysticism, and Satanism. When the Beatles came around, everybody freaked. They just loved the look, they loved the music. It really revolutionized the way people dressed. It revolutionized the way people wore their hair. It started, I think, a revolution in America. It is hard to overestimate the impact that the Beatles had on the world at large as youth by the millions were given a form of emotional shock treatment. They influenced everything that I've ever done. I even remember, you know, growing up hearing Beatles songs and all their songs were timeless. They built the structure for rock and roll. The Beatles actually were bringing everybody along with them on their voyage of their discovery. Beatles went out and took the world by storm. I grew up with them. They helped us grow up. They got me arrested three or four times. I think they did a lot for society. But those songs are in my memory banks for the... I think they're actually in my genetic material. All-time favorite musical group. Beatles. Beatles. If they dressed a certain way, everybody wanted to be like that. When the Beatles got long hair, I got long hair. The fact that my mother didn't like it was an enormous part of its appeal. No. Millions were seduced by the music and image of the Beatles to trade in their biblical values for Crowleyan ideals. I had this theory that the Beatles were actually the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You know, that insofar as they changed the entire face of the planet. If people know it or not, they've all been influenced by the Beatles, you know, in our generation. Because we've, we've grown up having that be a normal part of our culture. Reluctance to go back to an old deferential culture. Um, is exactly, you can see, what the Beatles represent. Because if the Beatles were one thing, they were disrespectful. The 1960s were the perfect time for Satan to introduce his revolution. He had already established his groundwork through men like Harry Hay and Kinsey and Timothy Leary. Both Kennedy and Martin Luther King were shot dead, and the environment was ripe for revolution as the baby boomer generation was living in a spiritual vacuum. What was happening at the same time was, of course, the boomer generation growing up. And so you suddenly had a very large, very young population, really for the first time. And the music just fed into that. So you've got all these things coming together, and then, then you always have to add to that the imponderable factor of individual brilliance. Yoko Ono said that the Beatles were not aware of all that was coming through them. She said they were like four mediums at a seance who had gathered together, and a spirit appeared and channeled through them. We have already noted that John Lennon summed up the Beatle Revolution when he quoted Lester Crowley and said that the whole Beatle idea was, quote, do what thou wilt. The Beatles brought this message through the music to the masses and they gobbled it up. It sort of set fire to a whole lot of things, gases that were ready to be ignited. And it said, yes, you can do things. Come on, let's just do it. Let's take over. Let's join this ride. The Beatles came along and everything changed. It suddenly became about 
young people will decide what goes on. Young people will decide how we dress. Young people will decide the music we make. And all of that culture which we now take for granted um, happened for the first time then. I think the music of the Beatles had a phenomenal effect upon the whole world. It was through the influence of the Beatles that millions of youth around the world were almost overnight turned away from Christ to the gurus of the East. Gurus like the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi were given a platform to pass out mantras like candy to the youth. Hippie youth began repeating these mantras believing that they were in some way scientific when in fact they were calling out on the names of Hindu gods and demons. Yoga is actually a word that means to yoke and speaks of yoking with pagan gods. God's word warns that these false gods are actually demonic beings and Jesus Christ warned against the repetitious praying of the pagans. Well, before the Beatles came around, I don't think Indian spirituality and things like that were an everyday part of Western culture. It was entirely the hippies, you know, thanks to the Beatles who decided to, you know, go to India and, you know, discover yoga and meditation. Now we all have yoga on every corner. You know, there was never anything like that before they came along. They really wanted a spiritual revolution, a, a transformation. It was time for a, a generation to assert themselves. And this is the revolution that the Beatles caused. This revolution was challenged after John Lennon claimed to be more popular than Jesus Christ. This was a wake-up call to many young people around the world as they took to the streets and publicly destroyed their Beatle albums. Don't you forget what the Beatles have said. Don't forget to take your Beatle records and your Beatle paraphernalia to any one of our 14 pickup points. Sadly, this wake-up call did not last very long as society at large fell back asleep and the Beatles would launch their next assault with Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. The rock musical here epitomized the doctrines of the 1960s as it exemplified the ideals that were at the heart of the rock and roll hippie movement, which were in fact largely based on Crowley's teachings. In 1969, the London Times declared Aleister Crowley as one of the, quote, makers of the 20th century. British journalist Gavin Badalay, who was a member of the Church of Satan, said that it is, quote, easy to see how a Crowley might interpret the age of Aquarius as the eon of Horus, predicted by Crowley. A lot of people were doing what they wilt. He went on to say the free love and wanton drug abuse so central to Crowley were now common practice among many young people. Anger happily announced Crowley's dictum that the key to joy is disobedience and declared not only was the eon of Horus upon us, but the eon was Lucifer. Kenneth Anger, the co-founder of the Church of Satan, said, quote, Christianity has had its day. Crowley said it would be replaced by the Eon of Horus, who is the crowned and conquering child. Kenneth Anger said of his film Lucifer Rising, which was about the rise of Satanism in the 1960s, that it was, quote, a film about the love generation, the birthday of the Aquarian Age, showing actual ceremonies to make Lucifer rise, the rebel angel behind what's happening in the world today. Indeed, even as Aleister Crowley had taught that the new age of Antichrist would dawn when Horus was aligned with Mars, Aquarius, the song from the rock musical here, declared that the new age had begun in the 1960s as Jupiter had aligned with Mars. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter...